I wanted to show um, multiplication using an area model, focusing on two by two digit multiplication. If you watched the other video, um, I showed 56 times 21 using the standard algorithm. And so this video is going to show how I could set that up using the area model. My first step before I can even draw the area model is to figure out how many rectangles am I going to need within my larger rectangle. So in order to know that, I need to know the different parts that make up this multiplication problem. If I split up each number by the place value, I know that 56 is represented by 50 and 6, and 21 is represented by 20 and 1. If I counted up the total um, numbers here, 1, 2, 3, 4, that tells me that I need four sections in my area model. I need two tens and two ones. So what that might look like is splitting it up like this. It doesn't matter where you put each of the numbers. I could put 56 up here. I could put it down the side. Um, as long as each section represents one of these numbers. For example, I like to put the bigger number on top. So this part is going to represent 50. This part right here is going to represent 6. Now I have to place 20 and 1 over here. So this side is going to represent 20, and this side is going to represent 1. Now I need to figure out what each rectangle represents. So I'm going to zoom in on that part. If I took just this rectangle and isolated it, I know that I need to multiply 50 times 20 in order to get an answer for this rectangle right here. If I isolated um, just this rectangle right here, then that would be 6 times 20. This rectangle right here represents 50 and 1. So 50 times 1. And then last but not least, this last rectangle right here represents 6 times 1. Now I want to make sure that you understand where each of these numbers come from. So when I try to figure out just this rectangle right here, I am looking at the number from this side right here, and I'm looking at the number from this side right here. That will tell me the area for this rectangle. So again, if I'm just focusing on this box, I'm going to look for one side, this side has the number 50, and I'm going to look for the other side, and this side has the number 20 on it. So if I multiply 50 times 20, I will get the area of just that rectangle. Same goes for the rest of these. If I needed to find the area of this one, I would look at this side, which is represented by 6, and then I would need to represent, uh, figure out what this side represents. There's not a number written on this side, but I know that it's equal to 20 because this side and this side are parallel. Throwing in a little geometry here. So because this side does not explicitly say 20, I know that it's 20 because that's 
side over here is also 20. So that's a good way to make sure that you are doing the right multiplication for each box. Again, if I'm looking at this box down here, I need to look at this side. It's not There's no number written over here, but I know that it's equal to 50 because it is parallel to this side. So if that is 50, then this side will also be 50. And then this side, which is equal to 1. Last but not least, I have this side that doesn't have a number written on it, and I have this side that does not have a number written on it. I know that this side represents 1 because it is parallel with this side, and I know that that side represents 6 because it's parallel to this side. So now that I've made sure that I have each of the rectangle's areas, I can solve for those parts. If I take 50 times 20, I could focus on just 5 times 2. 5 times 2 is 10. And then go back and add the two zeros because I'm multiplying two tens together. So 50 times 20 is equal to 1,000. Next, I go 6 times 20. If I wanted to focus on just my math facts, I could multiply 6 times 2, which is equal to 12, and then add the zero at the end. Fifty times one, any number multiplied by one will stay that number. So I know that that is equal to fifty. And same with six times one. Six times one is equal to six. Okay, I have each of my pieces. I have this rectangle, this rectangle, this rectangle, and that rectangle. What I need to do next is to add up each of these pieces. And zoom out a little bit. I like to start with the biggest number and go down from there. That way I keep everything nice and lined up. So if I start with 1,000, then I go to my second biggest number, which is 120. The next biggest number, which is 50. And then last but not least, I have to add six. So I have all of my pieces. I'm going to add those up, starting in the ones place. Zero plus zero plus zero plus six is still six. Zero plus two is two, plus five more is seven. Zero plus one is one, and one plus nothing is still one. So my answer to my original problem, 56 times 21, is equal to 1,176. And I can use the standard algorithm to check my work. This is the same exact answer I got the first time when I did it, so I know that that's correct.